secondary science educators. This is your brief, hopefully, curriculum update uh, portion from me uh, about the resources that we have available as a district and where to find them. So uh, right away, you will want to be in Schoology, which you may already be, and you want to go to groups and you want to go to the CISD curriculum and instruction group. Uh, it should be there on your uh, main page. If it's not, it'll be over under my groups. You can find it. Uh, it's an important place to be. And once you click that, it will take you to this boring page with nothing on it. Uh, you want to click resources. Yes, there are a lot of clicks here. And you will want to cr click curriculum documents. You are secondary and you are science. So uh, that'll take you to this very long list of different folders uh, and, and other resources. So I want to kind of walk through that with you. Um, this does not look as fancy as the elementary landing pages. I just want to give you a sneak preview of what that may look like for you someday. So let me just show you that. This is an example in second grade. It'll all be um, much more visual and a little bit more user-friendly to find things and exactly what you're looking for. But for now, um, we are looking at a major curriculum document and curriculum in general update coming for the 2024 school year. So for now, we're not going to tackle that just yet. Um, we will wait till those new teaks come out and um, really do some earnest curriculum writing. So anyway, we are in secondary. Yours is just a list and there are a lot of uh, folders because you have a lot of different grade levels and also different courses in the high schools. So um, what I wanted to first bring your attention to is that your scopes and sequences are up here on top. Um, I've broken it down from 6 to 8 and then 9 through 12 because clearly those documents get very, very long to, when you start putting all the different courses together in one place. So uh, it's very hard to find your course. So hopefully that'll make it load a little faster and for you to get there a little easier. Um, that being said, I've got one open here uh, for 9 through 12 uh, just to show you kind of what they look like when you open them and uh, hopefully refresh your memory if you've been with us before. If you haven't been with us, this is your week-by-week -week pacing guide essentially um, to kind of get you through the school year in a um, timely fashion and get everything covered that you want to get covered. Um, so first thing you're going to want to do is zoom right on in there because it's too small. Um, Basically, if you've seen this before, you definitely um, uh, know what this is all about. We uh, list all the uh, statements, the ICANN statements, the, basically the learning objectives for each of your weeks throughout the year. Um, there are TEKS listed as well, and there are um, high priority learning standards or TEKS in bold. So you will see those here and there as we go. Um, for example, right there, HPLS in bold. So that being said, um, we've kind of cleaned these up a little bit. There's a, a consistency with bullets and things like that to make them look a little bit more visually pleasing because otherwise they're not. Um, we've updated any kind of, um, you know, things needed to be shifted ahead or uh, back a little depending on the way the calendar year worked out. We've got that. All the um, holidays and flex professional learning days and early release days should be listed in there somewhere so that can help you kind of plan and know ahead. Um, one other thing that you'll notice in these documents in different forms and fashions is the um, the ELPS um, are integrated. So those are English language proficiency standards. Um, for our on-level and honors courses, we want to be very mindful of the fact that uh, we often have uh, learners with um, those kinds of needs and we want to be responsive to those. So you'll see um, different ELPS referred to and how to integrate those even in certain cases is actually written in here. Um, if you need any help with that or, or want to brainstorm about ways to reach, especially if you have a lot of English language learners, easy for me to say, in your class, um, class is, you uh, can certainly reach out to me. Um, so this just kind of breaks it down and, and um, hopefully it is helpful with the new dates and everything for this current calendar year. Other than that, um, where you really want to be focused on is the rest of everything that's specific to your course. Now, uh, there will be, by the way, for grades 9 through 12, certain courses that don't actually have uh, an updated scope and sequence in there because curriculum writing over the past summer, post-pandemic, was pretty limited and um, educators, I think, needed a well-deserved break. So we only have um, a handful of those courses. Um, 
When you actually, let's just pick on oh, um, say eighth grade, when you open up a um, folder, you're gonna see a bunch of resources, um, years, year at a glance documents, um, the overarching K-12 scope and sequence basically, so you can see all the uh, vertical and horizontal alignments. And um, you'll see the different units down below. So um, let's just pretend we're, uh, and this may have changed depending on um, you know, interpretations and changes in the scopes and sequence. Again, we're not really going to be drilling down into Schoology all that much. I'm going to just randomly pick Earth Science for now. Um, so that'll take you, it's a lot of clicking and a lot of folders, but eventually you want to get to your um, Understanding by Design unit plan. So I want to talk a little about what they are. If you Even if you have been in this district for a while or if you're brand new, it's a good um, thing to review the history of, of where these came from and why they are here and how they can be very, very useful for you. Um, they are understanding by design um, plans and they are written in a certain template. There are three stages in our UBD or understanding by design process that you use to design um, your unit plans. And uh, the first one is stage one, because um, when you try to uh, write these unit plans, you have to begin with the end in mind. So you want to kind of ask yourself, all right, what do I want my kids to be able to do at the end of this unit or at the end of this school year or when even they graduate? So you'll see that we have uh, long-term transfer goals right there at the beginning of every single one of these unit plans and those are our big kind of key ideas that a panel of uh, very um, important and wonderful science educators got together and came up with a couple years back. So um, that's the big deal or big picture uh, about stage one and then you'll also see um, all the main content understandings, knowledge and skills, um, uh, essential questions, things like that. And of course, obviously your standards, your actual TEKS, your learning standards, and the high priority learning standards are very clearly um, denoted in the left column here. Uh, so you just want to kind of make sure you read through all this stuff ahead of teaching the unit, because once you um, go through stage one and identify all the learning outcomes and, and the goals of, of what you want your kids to be able to do, uh, you can drill down into other uh, key areas like vocabulary that you're going to be using throughout the unit, prerequisite um, knowledge and skills, um, and some uh, misconceptions, I might have just said that, misconceptions are huge because you want to know uh, historically what misconceptions kids might have coming into your unit before you go and throw new content at them. Um, and here again, uh, within some of these documents, you're going to see those ELPS once more. Uh, a little bit more um, clarity is given in that case if it's listed in here, so that's great. Once you get through kind of your, your end goals, you start to design your evidence, which means how do you know the kids are getting it? And that obviously boils down to different types of assessments. Um, they can be performance, pre-assessments, um, summatives, informatives. Um, did I say all that? I, I think I got them all. Um, so definitely take a look through some of these. Uh, the specific hyperlinks will take you right to um, specific examples of what's typically used by teams. Now again, a lot of this may have been um, changed or abandoned depending on um, new resources, new ideas, uh, new staff, things like that. But um, this is a great place to start. Stage three is your learning plan. So this is the actual learning experiences um, that you would want to um, use some of, not all of, because it's impossible, but some of during your actual um, instructional days um, and class periods. So uh, it's a lot. There's a lot of information in here and it all wraps up with um, responsive teaching. So, you know, what do you do if they don't understand or what if they need some um, intervention or support or maybe even some extension ideas. There's a lot of uh, strategies here. Also more support for your English language learners as well. So uh, that's the unit plan in a nutshell. I hope that uh, you've seen these before. If you haven't, definitely you now know where to find them. Uh, that's a huge, huge part of what we do here in this district is try to try to um, plan your lesson design with the end in mind. So that's the whole process of understanding by design. Um, and so we, I just wanted to review that so that we're all on the same page as to where all this came from and why we teach the way we teach. 
So I appreciate your patience on that. Um, let me go back to our main science secondary folder here. And what you're gonna notice, I actually, um, it's at the bottom right now, but I have a feeling I might move this up to the top, but you're gonna see this little cute picture diagram looking thing. And it says digital resources. Uh, this was created, uh, this landing page at least, was created by our um, wonderful digital learning coach staff uh, to kind of give you a one-stop shop for some of the newer, especially the newer things that we have available to us that are digital. Um, you'll see that there are grade levels listed there. So if, if you're, you know, six, seven, eight, or any of the high school course subjects, if it says something through 12th grade, that's or six through 12th grade, that's for you. Um, and you can access that. Um, what you'll notice is that this is not just a, a picture, it is actually a live um, link that you can click typically, uh, unless it says single sign-on. So if it says single sign-on, that's gonna be a, um, a resource that you can go to our CISD staff page. This is a major change going into this year. This was uh, done through our tech, tech folks and our web page um, designer. So when you go to the CISD staff page, it's going to cue you to log in uh, with your single sign-on or your, your district credentials. And once you're in there, you're going to see everything you have available to you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, all the apps that we, and it's different for every teacher depending on your grade level, but all the things that you're going to want to be using throughout the school year are in here. Um, so if, just, just go in there and explore what you have. You're going to see the gizmos. Um, link is in here somewhere. Uh, I can't see it at the moment, but it's in here. I know it's somewhere. Uh, Flocabulary, there it is. Uh, Flocabulary is going to be in there for you. Um, even, you know, if you want to have a one-stop shop, this is a great place. You can get into eSchool, you know, grade book things, Schoology, um, if, you, if you're not already in it, um, and some other stuff. So, Check this out. It's 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 got all the old stuff that we used to have, like links for um, you know seeing your paychecks and all that. But our, our curriculum resources are in here as well. So that's what you what it means when it says um, single sign on in Schoology here when you're looking at your landing page. So gizmos and um, vocabulary. What else? Uh, even some of the other ones. Uh, oh, Discovery Ed, if you're uh, still accessing that. Those are all single sign-on resources. Now, the one I wanted to draw some attention to is something that's critical, which we already talked about in my pre-assessment spiel earlier in this curriculum update, and that's the Page Keeley probes. Uh, these are tools that you have access to, and it's an electronic um, book series that is put out, and we kind of purchased it through NSTA. So when you click that link, that box, the orange um, button, you can see it'll do, it'll open something for you. So again, it's live. Uh, that'll take you to this um, huge spreadsheet. The reason right now that I want to direct you this way is because some of the links over the years in the curriculum documents, if there are any, have gone dead. These are amazing tools if you want to pre-assess or formatively assess your kids uh, throughout the um, unit or course of the school year. Um, for you guys in secondary, um, you're going to want to look possibly maybe at the volumes one, two, three, four. These typically go to about, I think they're three to th third through sixth grade. Um, so you can kind of, if there's something that's relevant to what you're teaching, that's organized by strands. Uh, if there's something relevant to what you're teaching, go ahead and check it out. And what you'll notice when you open one of these, and it's going to take a minute, um, I'm going to actually go over to, say, Physical Science Volume 1, because let's say you're a physics teacher and you want to um, pre-assess or um, see if your kids understand uh, the concept of what a speedometer does or speed in general. You can grab, and I, by the way, this, this has been cleaned up. If you've ever seen this before, uh, it used to be a nightmare with huge links all over the place. We've corrected it and made sure these links actually work, and you don't need to sign in. So I'm going to let uh, this load and just talk a little more about what they're used for. So again, pre-assessment, informative assessment, if you want to get at what your kids really understand. Okay, this one's about speed units. Not a bad... Um, not a bad thing uh, to, I would say this is a great pre-assessment as you head into one-dimensional motion and you start to get to things like speed and, and velocity. So if you're looking at this, it's just basically here's your student handout and this is the kind of the prompt that you would either, you know, give them in Schoology or put up on the screen or however you want to do it. Um, I, I'd prefer to um, 
even maybe digitize this in some way. You could use Pear Deck or some other digital resource that we already have. Then it takes you to all the notes about how to roll this out, how to use it with your kids, how to, um, you know, use it multiple times in certain examples where you want, or cases where you want to assess and reassess just to make sure your kids have, have really truly mastered it. So, and it gives you some other additional information and resources. So, uh, basically it takes you to a single, I'd almost call it a chapter or a short unit in each of these electronic books. And these are amazingly written. They're written by um, science educators and scientists that got together and they have been a big um, part of the research in uh, modern science education. So it's proven that these work really well and, and some in most cases they're actually really, really interesting and thought-provoking. Gets kids to think, uh, uh, talk to each other, ask questions to you and to each other. So uh, this, is, this is a big one that you I really encourage you to explore as you look at pre-assessing and formatively assessing your kids throughout the year. So again, those are Paige Keeley probes. You'll find them linked in your curriculum documents on occasion, but um, especially in some of the APIB courses, you may not have ever had the chance to go through these. I recommend uh, trying it out because that's going to be a big um, help and a time saver because they're already written and it already tells you um, how to how to roll it out and how to use it. So definitely check those out. All right, I think I've covered everything I can. I am uh, sorry that your secondary science resources don't look more pretty like the elementary, but again, we will get there. Um, it's on my long-term plan here as we look at the next few years, but I hope that helps you kind of uh, steer your way towards curriculum documents. Um, next up will be any particular course curriculum updates um, that if you had um, curriculum writers this summer, you'll hear from them uh, just so you're all on the same page. So thanks for listening. Okay, hello. I'm going to go over the sixth grade science scope and sequence and just discuss some of the things that we did during curriculum writing this summer. So the major thing that you'll see is we reworked the order of the teaks within some of the units. So they may be in a new order just to help the flow of unit to unit so that it's not so chunky and it's more of a nice story that we're telling throughout the year. Um, we will start with three weeks in unit zero, which is going over those scientific processes. And we're going to end that third week and go into unit one with density. So they're moving directly from measurement into density. We will then move into unit one, which is matter, and we will do that for the rest of quarter one. When we move into quarter two, we will be working on units two and three, and we'll be able to finish unit three before we leave for break um, at the end. So you'll notice that the biggest change is in unit two. We took out re renewable and non-renewable resources, and we moved that into the unit five instead. When we come back from winter break, we will be hitting unit four. We'll have about four weeks within unit four. And then we will work into unit five. Um, and we will finish that before spring break. Quarter four is mainly gonna be spent in ecology, our unit six. The only thing that you'll see is um, around Earth Day, we are going to be doing that renewable, non-renewable resources so that we can spend a full week, more of like an earth week instead of an earth day. You'll notice at the end of each of the units, after progression, we also put in a transition. And this is just a way to help you transition from one unit into the next and make it more cohesive. Within the UBDs itself, we went through and we checked all of the links. We took out any links that no longer work or updated them if we could find them again. And we added in some new links such as brain pop vocabulary and anything else that we could find. We also did that within the CISD Schoology group as well. We cleaned those up so that they're a little bit easier to go through and nicer to look at. We are going to look at a few possible learning experiences that you might consider um, in the first few weeks of school here based on some of what we've got available to us. And I'm just starting out in the um, 
curriculum and instruction group, secondary science. And uh, your scope and sequence for sixth grade is talking about our unit zero, which is um, just kind of getting to know your kids and establishing those relationships, obviously critical, but also um, using some science and letting them actually do something again, which is going to be great. So there are a lot of cute little things you can do in this unit um, that will get them to eventually be very solid on um, variables and graphing, which is an all year thing. So that's great. Uh, also, one of the big uh, end goals here is density and having them understand that idea before we get into, say, unit one, which involves chemistry. So density is huge for, for that. So um, definitely important stuff there. And if you click into your sixth grade folder down here and drill down into unit zero there it's going to give you this curriculum document and i just wanted to point out that uh, the curriculum writers that put this all together have identified those fifth grade vocabulary words that the kids should be already coming in with so um, that might be something to really hone in on early on make sure the kids are good with that um, also take a look at the other just general prerequisite knowledge um, and some of the vocabulary you've all identified as being really critical. And so um, definitely after you read through that, you're, you should be good to go, but we might need to do a little bit more pre-assessing on, on, on some of that. Um, in our digital resources uh, blending page here, I'm just going to reference, I found a Paige Keeley probe that I really liked. Um, and when you click that button, it takes you to the spreadsheet. Then when you click over on the tabs down here, Physical Science Volume 1, you'll see one called Pizza Dough. And it's kind of a kind of a nerdy way of looking at it, but uh, certainly it's something kids know a lot about, right? So um, all it really gets at is the concepts of weight and mass. And obviously that's going to be an important building block for kids to completely understand before we get into things like density. So again, uh, just read through that, see if you like it. And it'll at least generate some, some good discussions for those kids. And now I will move on and suggest a, an actual hands-on activity. I've got a set of cubes here and they're all labeled, which is nice. You may also find in your storerooms that there are cylinders, but we all know that they roll, so that may not be the preference for little sixth graders who are very excited about their science lesson. So um, if you stick with the cubes, um, the concept of density requires them to come in with some sort of understanding about mass and volume. So rather than just writing what mass and what volume are, and uh, being because it's a very dry subject, we can have them interact with some materials and do something fun. So. First, I would ask them, okay, let's rank these cubes by volume. And I would love to listen to them develop uh, the idea of what volume is and, and how this doesn't make any sense to ask them to do that because obviously these are all the same size. So that's one huge thing. If we can get kids to be thinking about volume in terms of size or how big the object is, then they really can understand it. So if you can simplify it to just that, Think about what they can do with it. What has more volume, the the planet Jupiter or the Moon? They can quickly say, "Well, well, Jupiter's bigger." So that there there could be great um, opportunities there to get kids to really understand the concept of volume, rather than trying to um, work with oh how much space it takes up. Well, yeah, that's true, but it's it's much easier to understand when you think about it in terms of size. So the next thing I would then ask them to do is to rank these in terms of mass, and obviously. Um, mass is the amount of matter in an object. Well, the more matter that's in the object, the more it's going to weigh in the case of something that's here on Earth. So um, what we can do is have them rank them out so they can feel them and, and they can get together in groups or with thought partners and just argue about it. That would be really awesome to, to generate more discussions. And it does get into, okay, I thought plastic was just plastic or isn't all wood the same? Well, no, uh, you're gonna notice that some of them are really light for their size. So um, it's just a great way to get at it. And then they can say, all right, who's the who's the winner of all? Who's the most, who's got the most mass and so on and so forth. So um, just a great way to get at student understanding. And you can extend this with um, having triple beam balances available or scales uh, and let the kids go deeper if they want. Or you could, simplify it so if you need to modify it for some kids we can we can just kind of bring it down to okay let's just look at these oops hit the stand there we could just look at maybe these four 
okay? So it's it's an easy activity that can be um, used in different ways. You can, you can do more or less with it if you want. So it's just a simple, quick way for kids to have a little fun and get their hands on something and, and, and actually uh, play around a little bit while they learn.